Welcome to the Thin Blue Line Outdoors Podcast. This thing came bottling. Just ended up puking last night. It sucked. <laughs> Whoa. Ah! We got it. We wrap it in tin foil. <laughs> Throw it over the fire. <laughs> <laughs> Three, two, one. Hello, everyone. It's Thin Blue Line <laughs> Outdoors. Podcast 49, I have Ryan, the red coat on. Uh, good to have him. It's good to talk to him. We haven't had a face-to-face conversation um, in this year yet. <laughs> but, uh, um, yeah, exactly. Uh-huh. <laughs> but I'm uh, happy to have him on. Um, you hear that? Air conditioner. Uh, air conditioner. Are you good, man? Um <laughs> But anyway, uh, Ryan's on, um, and uh, we're going to break down his deer season. Um, He had an action-packed season, uh, and then I know he's got some plans for the 2023 season, so we'll talk about that too. Uh, Ryan, um, if I'm sure if people have watched any bit of the channel, they know who you are, but how about you give yourself a short introduction and uh, break down uh, your hunts from this year? Yes, sir. Well, I'm Ryan the Red Coat coming to you live right now from Illinois, but originally from Liverpool, England. Lads, it was a season. And technically, the season's not over. I'm still trying to figure out this last two, three days of a dull only late winter. I don't know yet, though, but. Season's been amazing. Uh, the problem is, I can't stop thinking. I want to hunt. I want to hunt all the time. I want to be in the woods all the time, and that's my biggest issue right now. Uh, is wanting more and taking a, a stop and remembering how good of a season it's actually been for me. Uh, I've smashed so many of my own records. Uh, I've stuck to the goals and I know we did a podcast last year I believe it was and we set goals for this year and we did a pretty good job meeting our goals and honestly all three of us I know and we did and I just I hope that you can go back find it and sort of put it in sprinkle it in this podcast uh, and hopefully one with Jesse and one for you as well but if I remember correctly, I was coming off a season where there was a, quite a few misses, if I remember correctly. Mm-hmm. And I believe one of my goals was to have, and I don't think I used the word perfect. I don't think I did. But for the purposes of this podcast, I'm going to use the word perfect. I think one of my goals was to have a perfect season. And what I meant by that was every shot I had was clean, zero misses, ethical quick mm-hmm. so with that being said opening day comes and when we went out on opening day uh, <clears throat> one of my favorite hunts 15 minutes into sunrise bang dough on the ground it's a good morning i'm like okay good start one mm-hmm. shot one kill cool uh, i believe it was i mean i'll just give you a quick one through i think it was two weeks later Mm-hmm. Something and like that. Again, boom. Me first ever turkey on the ball. Mm-hmm. One shot, one kill. I thought, oh my God, it's ramping up to be a great season. Yeah. Uh, I turkey hunt every year. I love to turkey hunt. Men, shut up. <laughs> I love to turkey hunt. Never did I imagine it. On the ball, you know, turkey's hard enough as it is when you've got a shotgun in your hand. Uh, so I never would have thought that. But what I did know is I knew that we had a flock of about 16, 17 turkeys on the farm. Now, this flock that we've got specifically is is mainly just hens. Mm-hmm. And when they're all together that time of year, it's just a flock of hens. Toms are elusive. Uh, I haven't seen a tom. Well, I've seen it from a distance, but up close and personal, I haven't seen a tom for two years. Mm-hmm. And that was on the farm when I had two toms in front of me, right in front of me, decoy, called them in from the roof. They flew down, went to take a shot and click. Mm-hmm. Uh, the shotgun didn't fire. Uh, I haven't seen them physically. 
So I had a flock of 16 turkeys came come in and I made that flock 15. Mm-hmm. That was exciting. At first, I thought I missed. Mm-hmm. Yep. You know, the video, it was like, because I heard the arrow, and then I seen the arrow stuck right into a felt tree stump. I'm like, oh my God, I've seen the turkey walk away. But I was so focused on the rest of the flock, thinking, man, these aren't running. These weren't flying. These weren't spooked. So I'm so focused on re racking the, uh, the crossbow that what I failed to see is that the turkey that I shot actually took a left. Mm-hmm. And then, oh, you know what I was like, near is the, the tackle. Mm-hmm. I can see it, I can hear it. I'm like, oh my God, oh my God. I got the turkey, so it was a nice hand. Mm-hmm. Uh, took that back, we had that for Thanksgiving. And, and I have got to give props to my sister-in-law on this one, Emily, Jesse's wife, because she, she cooked that turkey. And it was the best turkey, wild turkey that I've ever had. Yeah. She, she nailed it. She absolutely nailed it. So I was very grateful for that. I got to slice the bird mm-hmm. on the Thanksgiving, one that I harvest. And then <clears throat> the big spectacle, I don't know whether it was like a week, 10 days or something after the turkey. So this all happened in the space of three, four weeks. Mm-hmm. I went out with Jesse for my annual brother-in-law hunt. We were on the farm. Uh, and about, I want to say about 8 o'clock, half 8 or something in the morning. It's all on the video. Mm-hmm. Jesse, t- I've got a book. Mm-hmm. It's got a made up for him. A made up. We've got a book down. I said, lad, just give me till 11. You go look, you go look. Because he was on the other side of the farm. He went look and I said, you go look. Just give me till 11. It was one of them days where we see movements, books chasing those. Mm-hmm. And, and this, is, this is what, this was seven to 10 days before shotgun season. So I think it was at least the start of the rut, if not <clears throat> well into it. Mm-hmm. So we went looking and I think it was 10.55 a.m. I'm grunting, I'm, I'm giving it everything. My last ditch effort, I'm giving it everything. I'm grunting, I'm rattling. Next thing, throw a few grunts, look to me right, and i just seen this. What originally I thought was a six-point come barreling in. Just straight lines. He came, in, he came in He came in quick. I mean, he came in quick, and he came in right to my stand. Mm-hmm. So I'm like, oh, my God. God. So as I say, I was talking on on the video saying it was a six point. That's how fast it happened. I couldn't even get a good look at him. What I did know is that he had antlers and he was a minimum of a six. So like I've stood up now at this point, this tea is right under me. So, you know, me, I'm shaking like a shitting dog. I'm like, oh my God. Gets up, picks me ball. I had to stand up. I had to do a 180 spin mm-hmm. and, and you know that was shaky that oh, yeah. I used to is, yeah, we need a bigger tree, but it was shaky. But it's on a 180, I turned around, I pointed, and I had a nice shot. It went bang now, bang, in it. I could see the arrow in it. The arrow never left the tear. He just ran around, and I think he went 70. I could see, see him the whole time. Mm-hmm. I was watching. He ran around, he ran around, he ran around, came into the field right in front of me, tree stands, and then next thing, bang. Easy tracking job. Mm-hmm. We got out there, got a boot and personal eight points. I'm like, oh my God. Oh my God. So then I got my biggest deer ever on ball. So that was mm-hmm. my biggest deer on ball. Mm-hmm. Um, that's, that's sort of the story of my season. Hey, you and guys. Week, yeah. You guys, one thing I've, uh, I was talking to some guys I work with. And we were talking about you two, and and I was like, I mean, I, I was telling them, because, you know, I have, so I own 60 acres here, and my dad owns the 100 acres to the north. So I have 160 acres here to hunt, plus a couple other farms. So I'm hunting way more acreage than Jesse and Ryan. They're doing all this hunting and having success on 10 acres, approximately. I, maybe even less than that, but approximately 10 acres. Um, and you guys have always got it done on that 10 acres that 10 acres has been good to you yeah mm-hmm. been extremely good mm-hmm. 
I've always said uh, that's when we earn a text, Jesse about it can never be thankful enough mm -hmm. for, for the opportunity. Like what the farm has given us on that is just mm -hmm. it, it's escape. It allows me to get away from the concrete jungle. It allows me to get out there and sit, and, and that's that's where we think, that's where we plan, that's where we mm -hmm. figure out what's going on and where we're going and what we're doing. You know, that's our special place. You know, being out in the woods and at tree stands, and to have that opportunity is just incredible. Uh, I think every year, you know, I give props to the farmer, but you know, reflecting on the team mm -hmm. as well, like we've got to give each other prop prompts and that because. Every year we work harder and harder every year. Mm -hmm. We save in the right places to make sure that we've got the tools that we need and mm -hmm. we save over here to get tools that would make life easy. Like mm -hmm. we, we both, me and my brother were, went half each on a quad last year. Mm -hmm. and it's a blessing. Mm -hmm. Like it's a blessing. It gets us out of the stand quicker. It gets us back out quicker, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, so that was, you know, and then we're doing we're doing pre-season work we're hanging stands we're making trails we're cutting paths you know i planted a little bit of seed this year and hopefully next year i expand on that and get bigger but um and then the last but not least you know we've got to have our asses in the seats mm -hmm. yep we're not gonna shoot anything from the couch and, yeah and i i do know, I do kind of laugh too from when I first started hunting with you guys it would be like eight years ago now. Um, you know, you guys would maybe get out maybe two weeks if you're lucky. And, and even I think it was less than then, uh, when you guys first started hunting now, I get any, I, you especially coming from Chicago, driving all the way to your farm to hunt just for one set. Like uh, it's the dedication and the passion, which, I mean, is why you're part of the team and why we're friends and all that stuff. So you got you got to love it. And uh, I I always think of it, you know, and, and it it frustrates me, but it makes me so happy. Mm -hmm. I think I went out was it last weekend? I think it was opening uh, late late winter. Mm -hmm. I went yep. out last weekend. You know, that day I drove longer than a sat. Mm -hmm. And, and I couldn't stop thinking of it. And, and I, I hate, I didn't want to leave. I didn't want to leave. I was like, okay, I'll get down at 11. 11 came, no, no, I'm staying. Okay, 12's the max, 12. I've got to leave at 12, got to be home. Got work tomorrow. One o'clock comes, I'm still on the, you know, I just didn't want to leave. Mm -hmm. I just didn't want to go. But it, it takes a lot. Mm -hmm. it, it does take a lot. It, I wish I could roll out of bed and hunt. I'd be doing it every day, some some form or another, squirrel yep. or trapping mm -hmm. or something, doing something. But I make the most of what I've got. And uh, yeah, boom. Sometimes, uh, sometimes I'm driving more in one day than than I am hunting. Yep. But the fact that I'm out is, and as I say, I, as you said, mate, any invitation, any time, any place, anywhere, if it means I can get out. There, if it means I can get experience, if it, if it means I can share that camaraderie, mm -hmm. and you know anything, I'm there, mate. Mm -hmm. And one thing, uh, so Ryan, like, so part of a lot of our team members, which I'm going to try to introduce all our team members this year through podcasts. A lot of them already been on, like Ryan's been on multiple times of the podcast. But you know, we have a lot of cops or telecommunicators, dispatchers, as Ryan is one. So it's it's good to get away from that and that high stress job and uh get out in the woods um and i know i can i'll speak for myself here you know obviously i'm a uh police officer um i love my job absolutely love it but if i could quit today and just hunt and be in the outdoors 24 7 i would do it <laughs> i mean yeah. i mean i that would be the dream of this ever took off enough for that i ain't gonna lie that would be great if that ever happened um yeah. But, uh, you know, we got a long ways to go. And then also, I mean, mainly is we're having a lot of fun doing it. And I'm going to have Jesse talk about it whenever he comes on. But honestly, Jesse put into some perspective about the brand yesterday. I, it, I don't know if he really even meant to, but he sent uh, Ryan and I a picture of his two boys um, watching, uh, 
watching Ryan and Jesse on one of their YouTube hunts, and I'm like, if that's the only thing we accomplish as a brand is that our family and friends can live through our adventures and stuff, we're successful still. That's success. Yeah. I, w- I was at work yesterday, mm-hmm. and that picture came through, and it was a picture of me, two nephews standing in front of this big flat screen, and all I could see on it was me in a tree stand, and a to see the lads just watching an episode and mm-hmm. you know there's, there's my dad there's my uncle there's mr boom you know to mm-hmm. have that, that that was brilliant that mm-hmm. was absolutely brilliant and, and a few things from what you said there boom is like the job's stressful the job's hard the job's fast it's non-stop it you know it's long hours you know we forced over time and um all this stuff and, and we're busy all the time mm-hmm. like chicago communications as you can imagine yep it's never not busy mm-hmm. so we're hiring the- dispatchers just so you know <laughs> i said we're hiring yeah. dispatchers yeah. So you know. <laughs> yeah. and and officers and officers most of the time this season i was going to work mm-hmm. finishing work at 15 p.m Getting in my truck, mm-hmm. filling my truck, driving straight to the farm, getting the farm at what, three in the morning, mm-hmm. having an hour of sleep if I can, if, if you know, I wasn't excited, then getting out, then hunting the entire day, then driving the, the three hours back. You know, that, that was my season this mm-hmm. year, and it was because, you know, I want to want to make the most of it. Yep. want to make the absolute most of it. Me mm-hmm. days off, I get a few days off a week. Mm-hmm. Well, at least one of them is dedicated to getting the farm. Mm-hmm. So. Yep. And that, and man, I get excited when I think about, especially what you guys do with the 10 acres, but even, even me with here, like, I mean, one day I would like to own a farm, whether it's under the Thin Blue Line Outdoors name or is it just with you two? And, like, imagine if we have one, especially, like, here in Fulton County, where we had a farm where us three, um, you know, can work on it. And, like, look how much I'm getting done here by myself for the most part and how much you guys are getting done on your 10 acres here. And if we had an actual farm together, just the possibilities are boundless. Like, Yeah. Mm-hmm. And this, I think what one story that I did want to say when I was thinking of it. Mm-hmm. I've got this really cool story of this arrow, mm-hmm. right? And and I've and I've retired the arrow, and I don't know whether this is a thing. I don't know whether I've made this or, but if I did make it up, you made it here first. And I didn't <laughs> really up I've officially retired an arrow, and, and let me tell you what I mean by that one. Last year, I shot me first ever deer with a bow, with mm-hmm. the crossbow that mm-hmm. I'm using now, Templin crossbow. Mm-hmm. I used the same arrow, I didn't clean it, didn't sharpen it. Mm-hmm. I used the same arrow to harvest my turkey. Mm-hmm. And I thought, she was a good number, but three strikes in your house, aren't you? So I loaded that arrow up on the day that I shot me biggest ever book with that one. And I used the exact same arrow, never cleaned it. It still had blood on, it still had feathers mm-hmm. on. Well, I, say, I, I took the big feathers yeah. off, but, and then it shot me biggest ever book. And that was three strikes. And I thought, you know what? This arrow's done me well. Now, when I took the arrow out, <clears throat> uh, the the expandable blades were gone. Yeah. Completely gone. It looked the, like the, the arrow tip looked like it, uh, a small game. Arrow oh, yep, you know, yep, yep, yep. Mm-hmm. Them, mm-hmm. uh, covered in blood, and I thought, that is it. I'm retiring this arrow. So mm-hmm. I've got that in the back of the quad. I don't know what I'm going to do with it yet, but I've officially retired my first ever arrow. So, like, this season's been, especially since last October, so, so the one year, like, one year, the difference a year makes. Mm-hmm. First ever deer on crossbow, first ever turkey on crossbow, Biggest ever book on crossbow. Yep. And this, you know, this is all in in that time period. Mm-hmm. No misses this year at all, mm-hmm. uh, which is a great thing for me. I do want to just recap real quick. We, I was I hunted hard. We hunted hard. My brother flew out, and he was hunting with me. And then we done a week on the farm. Mm-hmm. Uh, in a week, not one single shot. Mm-hmm. Like. 
not one shot. Not on ball, <clears throat> not on. Um, mm. That's tough. Not, That's tough. It, it was <laughs> Usually for, you know, last year it was, they had they got two deer down during that week. Um, and then uh, and the years before, I know, especially with like you and Jesse, you guys go there and usually I'm getting pictures every day. Deer down! <laughs> <laughs> and uh Dog down to his dog. Yeah, so I know deer hanging in the barn. Mm-hmm. And then I know insult is injury because we ain't seeing shit. Cody, what you see it? I'm seeing you ah, I see a fifteen deer today. <laughs> Saw eight deer today. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> you know, early on in the week we, we were seeing movements. Mm-hmm. We actually had like I think it was like a six or an eight. Mm-hmm. Fifteen yards. Mm-hmm. The only problem was it, it decided to stop right where the tree was. Like, mm-hmm. it stopped at 15 yards. Mm-hmm. The tree was right in the way. So we had that. And we seen, we seen bits and bobs, but they were 800 yards away yeah. on the field. On our little plot, mm-hmm. not mm-hmm. Yep. at all. Yes, he had one opportunity. And I think I said to him, I'm never going to, I'm never going to be able to forgive him ever for this because we'd hunted the week. And when I tell you it was minus 12 degrees Celsius, we all three of us were freezing. <laughs> it was cold, man. We had black force by the end of the night. Yeah, it was cold. It was cold. It was miserable. But again, we like one day you didn't stand the entire day, didn't get out of the stand. Mm-hmm. One day we got down for lunch. And we were at the RV for 15 minutes to get a text from the neighbour. We're doing a day job. When now, bang! It was like it was like that show, you know. Now we're all putting our shit back on. And we were right back out, and then again we hunted till it got dark. So we hunted it hard, and I think he had one deer on the very last morning coming at like 40 yards, and he took a shot with his shotgun, and his gun was off. Like mm-hmm. I don't. The last time he sighted that sucker in, I'm not a fan of that gun that he's got anyway because he had that. He had a giant and it misfired. It's mm-hmm. a one shot that, uh, and he had the only opportunity of the entire week. And mm-hmm. what happens? But, yep, yep. I understand. Uh, I understand gun issues. <laughs> yeah, I understand that. It's uh very aggravating. I, we are, I don't think we had any idea about how many shots you had. Oh. <laughs> I'm running it, out of it, slugs. <laughs> isn't it amazing, though? If you would have got that, mm-hmm. you would have never got your trophy. It's almost. And I actually had a guy comment on uh, one of my TikToks that I posted. It was like, it was meant to be. And that's. It's meant to be. That's the only way I can really explain it. Like, it was. Because I should have been, honestly, I should have been bucked out this year before I ever got a chance of that buck. You know, if I uh, if I'd, if I had brought my damn range finder during bow season, you know, and would have yeah. said that deer was a little higher, um, maybe I wouldn't have hit the twig. Maybe I would have killed that buck during bow season. And then, you know, um, and then with that big 10-pointer I missed, which I'm assuming the gun was off because, again, the Friday before, and I've, I've talked about this podcast already, uh, fr- first Friday of the first Illinois firearm season, I smoked a doe twice. Smoked her. She ran 20 yards. Um, I didn't know if the shot was great, so I shot her again. Both times I hit right where I was aiming and smoked her. Um, so, I mean, my confidence is high. And, and with a gun, my confidence is high. Um, and usually with a bow, too, but with a gun, I'm like, if you give me a chance, you're probably dead. Um, and this big 10 pointer came through on a Sunday morning. Um, I had a little bit of a window, and I'm like, I can make this shot, and I couldn't figure out what was happening. I kept hitting the tree in front of me. I'm like, I see a window, and I thought, well, maybe I just misjudge. Well, then once I found out my gun was off, I'm like, ha, ah, that makes makes a lot of sense. It makes a lot of sense. Um, mm. I think that's a hole that you're never ever gonna forget. No, and uh, like uh, the I'm. Uh, my uncle was texting me a few weeks ago, so I know I'm excited to see him. I've been looking at some uh, pedestals for uh, for that will hold uh, two deer, 
So if we so if we come to the shows, we'll hopefully have uh, a couple bucks for people to see, which we'll get to that here in a little bit. But uh, before anything else, you want to wrap up on this season, and then we'll move on to what you have going for twenty three. No, as I say, I wanna I wanna see if I can make. I, I'm I'm due to wear. Mm-hmm. So, uh, as my brother said, you you've just got to be happy with it. You know, you put the work and you put the effort in. Mm-hmm. You've had a, an amazing season. In the back of my head, though, I don't know whether I made this up as well. I'm making all sorts of crap up here, but if it, you know, if it didn't, let us know. And if it did, you heard it here first. I wanted to do the uh, what? What was I calling it? I was calling it the Illinois. Um, oh, what, the, what was the word? I know what you're trying to say, like the trifecta or whatever. You're trying to get perfect season, get all your fill, all your tags. The Illinois Grand Slam. There you go. <laughs> I know there's a Grand Slam for Turkey, but this is this is my Illinois Grand Slam. That's what I've had in the air. Mm-hmm. I have four tags at the beginning of the year. How good would it be? Or how good of a season if I could fill all tags? Well, I've one more tag. Three. I've got one one more tag left, <clears throat> and I'm I think I'm set to work. I'll, I'll have to check on the last uh, dog late season. But as I say, as my, as my brother says gotta be happy with it if you don't get out you don't get out it's the best season for me so far so yep yep i'm sure your freezer is looking pretty good right now with all that deer meat it has got space for one more though Um, it's got space for one more which is tickling me but i've got a load of pork from our texas trip last year Mm -hmm. i've got two deer in the freezer loads of deer bacon in the freezer uh so i'm basically set for the year Mm -hmm. well 2023 Ryan, what do you have going on in 2023? So I've had something in me and my brother have been talking to Lindsay's uncle for a, mm-hmm. a long time. Who's now. Who's uh, Lindsay, by the way? Obviously, I know. Oh, but... Lindsay's wife. Yeah, yeah. Go. Lindsay's the wife, uh, and it was Lindsay's uncle that sort of took me out hunting first. He's a, he's a master hunter, and I've said it before on a podcast. This man hunts to live, lives to hunt. Like that's only he eats. My people. Yeah. 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 So we've been talking to him for a long time. He he goes to Montana every year, every other year at least. Any time he draws a tag, he's in Montana, gets some nice muleys. Uh, and if he doesn't see muleys, he brings home some nice big white tail. So we've been talking to him about that for a long time, and we got some more information. I think the tags are seven hundred dollars. You apply for it. We apply as a group. Uh, more more on that to come. But either we all get the tag or we all don't get the tag. But we're driven, we're driven for that. Uh, mm-hmm. We want a big mule hunt uh, out west. It's a different style of hunting out there, uh, but I think we're ready for it. You know, I would have liked our ash to get, you know, uh, a little bit more experience in Illinois with me. But anyway, we're ready for it. Mm-hmm. We're ready for that. Yep. Or three hundred dollars saved up. As I say, hunting's like a lifestyle. It's not just a oh, mm-hmm. I'm gonna go out for a week, one week a year and get the job done. It doesn't work like mm-hmm. that. So again, but there's three hundred dollars in an envelope right mm-hmm. now. Every mm-hmm. paycheck was setting aside this amount of money or this, that, the other. Mm-hmm. Uh, so our aim is to apply for that tag. Now we don't know the exact date, but mm-hmm. the only information that I've got from him so far is that he usually applies for tags mm-hmm. around tax season when he gets his tax rebate. Mm-hmm. So I figure that be April or something, maybe March. Mm-hmm. Uh, I will be keeping you and Jesse up to date on that as well because, you know, that's an option for you. But mm-hmm. it's a bear shift that was throughout. Yeah. And it's on our list. Basically, I've got a mule deer, a bear, and eventually... A giant elk eventually that's eventually yeah i'm excited uh, for that one one day one day one day mm-hmm. one day mate so mm-hmm. but the plan for this next oh let me say 15 months mm-hmm. is to apply for this mule deer tag mm-hmm. now if one of us doesn't get it none of us get it so if that's the case and it's going to be an illinois deer again which is fine by me. Mm-hmm. The following year, because we'll have that pot already saved, because you get your money back. If yep. you don't draw it, you get your money back. So the following year, we've got a Canada bear on on the day, on the list. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So it was going to be our yeah. alternating regardless. Yep. 
I want to, I'd love to do a dog hunt, a, a winter dog hunt this year. Mm-hmm. I wouldn't mind doing a goose hunt, you know, mm-hmm. anything that I might, mm-hmm. I can do it or the opportunity to put something in the freezer. I'm there. Mm-hmm. I'm a, I make content. I had a terrible time with <laughs> Phil this year. The shots. You had, you got, you got every, I, sh- I should clarify. Suggesting Ryan, out of all of my people who film, which some people, this was their first year, like my brother-in-law Garrett, this is his first year. Um, but Jesse and Ryan, by far, have, other than me, have the most experience in filming on the team. And the one thing I told you guys going into the season, hey, try to get a little bit more beat roll. And you guys did. You guys really did. I was able to put a story together better, and I really appreciate that. <laughs> but for whatever reason, on all of Ryan's harvests this year, he missed the shot, and it wasn't because of lack of trying. Other than the turkey, he got the turkey, um, and it wasn't because of lack of trying. But uh, the the doe had just stepped off frame when you shot opening weekend, just barely. And the buck and the buck came in so hard. That was the problem. He came in so hard, and you could hear the shot. I mean, you couldn't have missed the shot by much. Probably maybe five yards, because I mean, he the buck runs off frame. I have two cameras set mm-hmm. up, and as it came into me right, I literally just went bang, mm-hmm. hit the GoPro right. Mm-hmm. Now, I couldn't, there was no way, mm-hmm. there was no way I was getting this, because by the time I yep. stood up and turned around yep. to get to this pad with this GoPro, I, I already had to, you know, I was aiming like this, mm-hmm. and then I spun 180, so there was no chance oh, yeah. I would have had to switch it on, mm-hmm. and I would have had to turn mm-hmm. it and drop the camera. That's how I would have had to go. But there was just no way. Yep. Uh, and that happens, but. Yep. And I've told everybody on the team, yeah, I would love to get the shot on film, but it ain't about that. We're out there having fun. Get you, get you some deer meat. Get get you a deer down. As long as I got enough to put a story together, we're good to go. And you guys give me plenty to put a story together. Hell, your reaction alone after yeah. you shoot an animal usually gives me enough for a story. <laughs> Mm-hmm. But it was one of them where you thought, I'm getting down in 10 minutes. Mm-hmm. It's got a book. It's, it's hot. The farm is hot. I don't want to leave. You knew something was something was brewing, and I just didn't want to leave. But I, And then to get that, it was just incredible. Yeah, you guys had a great hunt that day. So two books in a truck, and it was the first time we, I think we've done that. Two books mm-hmm. in, in my new truck. I got to back, it got turned into bacon. So, mm-hmm. yeah, brilliant. So, anyway, back to that next 15 months, th- there's a potential of us getting some footage and some uh, episodes of a big mule deer hunt mm-hmm. out west. Uh, I know there's a Canada hunt this year, and hopefully, you know, as you said, hopefully it'll be a yearly thing, mm-hmm. and that'll be next year. Mm-hmm. Listen, if we get the invite to come down to do some dog work, yep. I'll do some dog work. Yep. Uh, I'm thinking of even taking a couple of days of me, t- me time off through the winter to get to back down the farm to do some dog work myself because we've got a lot of dogs on that other property just for some footage and some predator mm-hmm. uh, annihilation. So mm-hmm. that, that's the plan. If not, there's mm-hmm. always the, the, the Illinois mm-hmm. season as well. Mm-hmm. Well, um, last probably last thing here, uh, or last couple of things. Uh, again, it is um, 2023. This is the first podcast recorded in 2023. The last podcast was actually recorded in December with Jesse. Um, I kind of want to talk about, and I'm going to have each team member do this and come on, kind of talk about your goals for the year. Um, I'll just go ahead and uh, go first. I'll give you time to think if you don't have them down yet. But uh, um, my goals for the year, um, when it comes to the brand, um, I said I have a video coming out. The video sh- hopefully will be out by the time this comes out. Um, it's t- 2022 recap. Um, I say in the video, I said we went from about 130 YouTube subscribers to over 500 now, you know. So, and the goal is to get to a thousand. I'm really hoping we get to a thousand. Once we get to a thousand and so many watch hours, we can start getting monetized. Um, that's just, you know, one, one checklist, one check, hit that goal. So I would love to hit that this year. Um, we'll, we'll wait and see what happens. Um, the brand I'm looking into it, I'm hoping the 
So if you guys probably haven't seen on the Thin Blue Line Outdoors, you don't see the trademark logo yet. That's almost finalized. I'm waiting on um, back from the federal government. Got to wait on the federal government as always, but I'm waiting to hear back on that. Um, so eventually, hopefully, we'll have TM behind our name. And I'm also looking into. Um, got to make. I got some questions answered from my tax guy. So hopefully, I'll hear some um, Monday. I'll be calling a lawyer, and hopefully, Thin Blue Line Outdoors is going to be an LLC real soon. Um, and then once that happens, uh, I've said it before. So 2022 was a great year for content, great year for social media growth. What it was not a good year for was merch. It was not a good year for merch. Mainly is prices have went up everywhere. Um, and I don't blame my local people that I use. Great people. They've always treated me good. But they had to raise prices just to stay competitive. I get it. I'm not mad at them at all. Um, but small time, you know, this is a hobby passion trying to make it into a business. I don't have that much cash flow. Um, so we now have everything. And I mean, we now have everything to do all merch in house. Um, um, so I am actually, when I get off the podcast here, I'm going to the shop, putting stuff together, keep working on it. I'm hoping within a week or two, I'll be, uh, screen printing, um, our own shirts. That's, uh, the hope anyway. Um, and the big reason is that, so we're going to push the merch, which the merch will help us do more things. But also, the goal is to try to get in one to maybe even three outdoor shows this year. Um, there's one in Iowa and two in Illinois. Um, that's the goal, to try to get into at least one of them. Um, but I would prefer to get in all three. just depends on how much merch stockpile, and I'm waiting on some LLC stuff. So I gotta. that's going to depend on that. Um, I'm hoping to announce that. Um, as soon as I know we're in and we're an LLC and all that good stuff. So that will be awesome. Um, so that is the brand's goal. My personal goal, um, uh, I'm trying to, I start a new workout plan, um, hunt, lift, eat. If you can check them out on Instagram, I'm doing their, right now they're couch to mountain, I do, um, workout plan. And then eventually I'll go from there. Goal is those to shed some weight, um, and uh, get in better shape. You know, I'm not in terrible shape, but I'm not in great shape either. So that's my personal girl. And then one that's kind of intermixed with the brand and my personal girl, just just because it is what it is. Uh, I got two hunts planned this year, which my wife's not thrilled about. Uh, but uh, going back hog hunting again um, here in a little over a month. Um, excited about that. Um, Got some uh, new people who've never harvested a hog before coming. So, you know, I'll probably only try to get one this year, to be honest with you. I still got some from last year, um, but hopefully get some good content down. And then, uh, as Ryan kind of said uh, earlier, um, I'm going bear hunting again. I have already harvested two bears in my life. Um, uh, I'm just going to take my bow, and we're going back to Canada. I'm excited for that. So hopefully there will be some good content, I'm sure, coming from that. Ryan, you're up, buddy. And we're back. So, Ryan, what is your goal for the 2023 season and personal yeah, girls and so forth and so on? Yeah, I've been thinking of this for a while. I kind of, you always think, man, it's going to be difficult because I've had a really good season. But again, we always set goals. We set goals every year because without setting goals, we're never going to be able to reach our. Uh, peak and even when we do we set further goals and reach further so you know it's a part of our thin blue line tradition we set goals and we aim we aim high uh, with that being said number one once again and i'll say it again have a perfect season and what i mean by that is aim small miss small shoot straight knock them down one shot one kill that's what i love um quick and easy that that that's going to be probably my first goal every season you know you'd always mm -hmm. want to have an effort uh, well at the same time enjoying the hunt so again have another perfect season push them boundaries um that's number one number two i want i want a good camera i really do mm -hmm. But there's something else that I want as well. And again, I'm going to set my goals high. I don't know how much of it I'm going to be able to get this year. Because uh, the reason why, I don't know whether they said this, but the reason why we have to miss the bear hunt this year is because one week before the bear hunt will be, me and my wife will be flying back home to England because uh, our ashes 
firstborn son is getting christened and we're stepping in as the godparents. So the week before Canada will be in England mm-hmm. um, on that one. Um, again, I was on, looking at flights yesterday and yeah, there's no way I'd be able to afford both of them even with the time off. Mm-hmm. Um, so we got that coming up. So keep that in mind. That's a big, that's a big expense. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> so I'd love, a goal is that I'd love for a, a nice camera. Every time when I sit in the stand, I just imagine having a camera with, with a nice arm. Yep. You know, it's nice. <laughs> yep. I know. I'd love that. I would, uh, especially with a Zoom feature. Mm-hmm. Now, GoPro's been good to me, and it's really good for, for up, up close shots. But I mentioned earlier that I had a really tough time this year with the weather. Every time I switched the camera on it, it switched itself back off because it was too cold. But to counteract that, I did go ahead and buy three. Uh, you've got these new new batteries out called Enduro batteries. So I bought three of them. And they're supposed to be good in, in low temperature and they're supposed to be longer lasting. Um, so I've got three of them sort of to counteract that. But I would like a good camera with a nice arm. So I can get some zoom shots and some, you know, some nice wildlife footage while I'm waiting. More content. So that's one goal that I've got. But the other goal as well is I want, I want a drone. I've wanted a drone for years and mm-hmm. years and years, and, and I've been on the website and think the drone that I priced up is like twelve hundred dollars. I took a flying up park and all that stuff. Uh, now I know you can't hunt with a drone. Uh, it's not necessarily for that though. But what I was thinking is, I love using drones and I love aerial footage. There's something special about it. But in the off season, even during hunting season, when we're around camp, you know, just imagine like them pan outs of us all sitting around the fire and moving your pans out. And yep. I'd love to get out on your lands in the off season and, and do some flyovers mm-hmm. with the drones for you so that you've got that for content. Yep. That is on uh, my list as well. So Yeah, so mm-hmm. that's on my list. Mm-hmm. I need a new roof as well, and I've been quoted $4,800 for that one. So with the roof and the trip home, it's going to be a seven grand month between now and April or May. Mm-hmm. Uh, this is what I'm, what I'm saying. Yep. But, Am I going to be able to make everything this year? So I know I need seven grand between now and the end of May. But with that being said, I still set my goals high. Uh, yep. Photography and videography is on my list this year. A nice camera or a drone and a camera the next year. Yep. So that's goal number two, footage. Goal number three, uh, be involved in the brand more. Like, when I say be involved with the brand more, I'm involved, I'm creating content, I'm hunting, I love doing that, but whatever I can do to support the brands, because again, we, we've got goals as well, and we'll, yep. we'll put the effort, we'll put the time in. Dude, as I say, my early goals, if I can, if we can get enough to pay for a tank of gas for the season for to me, win. I'd be fucking, yep. you know, that'd be beyond what I ever, yep. ever did. But whatever I can do to support the brand, we, we want to make mm-hmm. this happen, keep making content for mm-hmm. the brand mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. at some point i'd like to sit down with you i know we discussed this towards the end of last year i'd like to sit down with you um uh, figure out this editing yep. i have a mess about with that we just bought a new uh macbook pro that's good the other one's still good the screen's just gone on it apple have quoted 600 dollars to get that screen fixed so again once this is paid off, I'm going to put that in with Apple, get that screen fixed, get the, get the other MacBook Pro wiped out, factory set, yep. and that's just going to be me hunting laptop, taking with good. us and stuff like that. Yep. No, yeah. Maybe if we uh, maybe if you come down and do some goose hunt or a dog hunt or something, we can sit down and do that. So, yeah. Mm-hmm. It'd be fantastic. So, again, if that, if that can help, mm-hmm. then if i can make shorts or something but that, that that's my third goal is uh to continue pushing the brands be involved in the brand whatever i can do to help with the brand to push the brand to create content for the brand um whatever i can do for that that's mm-hmm. goal number three um and I'm th- i think i'm gonna stick with that i think i'm gonna mm-hmm. stick with that again perfect season this year mm-hmm. uh, i'd like to work on me videography 
uh, a drone or a camera this year mm -hmm. uh, so that we can branch out a little bit further and then three the brand the brand the brand mm -hmm. focus on that what i can do for that content 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 mm -hmm. yeah and i'm uh you know I'm, I'm hoping we can get this taken off one day and like it, if it could yeah pay for a tank of gas pay for maybe one day get enough to pay for some hunts that you know that would be the dream um hopefully you know people seem to like uh seem to like to watch our content um so we're gonna keep pushing it um I, again it's just we enjoy doing it we're we're passionate about it and uh you know myself and there's a couple other team members ryan being a telecommunicator you know we're involved in law enforcement we either either we're police officers deputies troopers or uh telecommunicators you know uh just this brand also is going to show there's more than just what you see on tv when it comes to the thin blue line um you know we're just some guys we got a passion um we love doing it uh we love our jobs, but we love the outdoors as well, and uh, we're going to keep doing it. I'm hoping to get some more law enforcement officers into hunting because um, there's a zen to it, just being in the outdoors. Um, that, and honestly, I think it kind of helps sometimes. When I say it helps you with high-pressure situations, you're used to pulling the trigger in high-pressure situations. Um, it, I mean, I have not had to take – a human life and hopefully i never have to but i have had a couple close calls um and i will say i was very happy how i performed in in those situations um and i my 100 percent a lot of my a lot of it comes from the training that i was put through in the academy and you know being part of the some of the teams and stuff i am 100 percent that that had to do probably the majority of it but also growing up being in the outdoors having that high pressure situation of that buck coming through and pulling a trigger whether it's with my bow gun whatever i mean i guess that's got to help somewhat well boom not pulling the trigger yeah that's because that's one thing i took away from two seasons mm -hmm. ago some pulling the trigger is the easy part mm -hmm. it's not pulling the trigger which which is hard yep. you know you can sit there for hours and hours and the mm -hmm. first thing you, see, you know you want you, you want to shoot everything yep sometimes mm -hmm. sometimes you know it's it's not a good shot mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. it's not meant to be you know and that's when you've got to mm -hmm. you know take that deep breath and and think mm -hmm. okay i'm gonna let it walk and yep i mean that's what i've took that's where my growth's coming i mm -hmm. mean think back to me eight years ago Oh yeah, uh, and you, you know, like two pigeons with a twelve gauge shotgun eight years ago. Mm -hmm. If a pigeon flew in front of me, you know, a squirrel with a twelve gauge <laughs> yep. shotgun. Yep. If it came close to me, now it's more about patience and taking the right shot at the right time and yep. being okay with that. Hundred percent. So, one thing you learn how to shoot, mm -hmm. when to shoot. But also you learn why not to shoot. 100%. 100%. Um, yeah, uh, I think that's going to cover this podcast, guys. Um, again, this is podcast 49. Uh, the goal is probably to have a lot of uh, the next couple podcasts is going to be team members. Um, and then I got a couple guests I'm hoping to have lined up after them. But uh, maybe Ryan will come back on after if he can sneak out for another hunt. Um sneak out and maybe get a dog or a deer but we'll see but uh so I have one more thing yeah go ahead announce to the world mm -hmm. oh there he is there he is what oh, good. Does he look? Mm -hmm. for people who don't know that is ryan's buck from the 2021 season uh shotgun buck 133 and seven eights correct ryan yep yes by uh duck creek taxidermy aka uncle coop <laughs> so a while i'm sorry that that's the old name not duck creek taxidermy uh central illinois wildlife city is duck creek is what it used to be when they were out here at my place so so yeah, job. Mm -hmm. Absolutely stunning job. I mean, the detail on it is just phenomenal. And there's a chance. 
there's a chance if we uh, have uh, get to go to some of the shows this year and Ryan gets to go, there's a chance that Buck will be there. So you guys just see if you want to see, along with uh, my big big boy this year. Um, but yeah, thanks guys for watching. Make sure you like, subscribe, follow. Um, thanks Ryan for staying on, and uh, yeah, we'll end this podcast. Thanks guys.